वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुत पद गम श्री गुरु वैश्वाश्र श्री रूपम सागर जात सगण रघुनाथ सजीव साधुत सवधूत भजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यव श्री राधा कृष्ण पाता सगणलिता श्री विशाखान्वता ओम अज्ञानिरांधस्ञान शलाक नमस्ते गुरुदेवाय सर्वसिद्धि प्रदायने भुवनैकबंधो हे कृष्ण हे चपल हे करुणक सिंधु हे वृंदावन चेन हिताधा प्रणेश प्रचार वालसुहो जगन्नाथ गुरो संसार मंदिना दत्तम पारदष्ट शरण गता राधा सम्मुख संशक्ति नारायण विषय Read up boxes. Uh, so here, um, as we see, it, even though some devotees have no fructified sinful reactions prior to them, some persons, upon seeing their material misery, such as disease, lamentation, poverty, as well as their sinful proclivities, mistake these to be the result of their prior to them. But uh, when the various troubles given to the five Pandavas, headed by Vishnu Maharaj, their exile to the forest and their inclination to play dice, caused by the Tanatha, they are Sri Krishna's eternal associates. So it goes without saying that they have no such power. So uh, Rupa Goswami has elaborated told about Tanatha. Yad Brahma Sakshat Kritarishta Yapi. विनाश महायाद Uh, the is exhausted, his death is certain, um, and after his death, he will inevitably take birth again, so that he can experience the results of actions performed in his previous body. It is not possible for anyone to escape the inevitability of birth and death. So, after the karma is finished, uh, what we are supposed to experience, then we get death, and again we suffer. Um, you know, so after the karma is like that. So. Um, Nyan also can burn uh, when nyan manifests in the pure mind. It burns up all the reactions except prapta karma, um, or those that are manifesting its present body. 
This is explained with an example which was beginning with the word Yatha. Bhagavad Gita also is seeing the uh, fourth chapter Jnana Yoga also is told. And if you practice Jnana Yoga, then uh, it will burn your prarabha. It will burn all the reactions but prarabha dharma. Prarabha dharma means something that are manifesting in this present body. That cannot be destroyed by Jnana Yoga. But, uh, <clears throat> but Bhakti Yoga, even the semblance of Bhakti Yoga or Nama Bhats can burn the prarabha dharma. So transcendental knowledge destroys the reactions of all sorts of karma, such as obligatory duties, nitya karma, um, occasional duties, nimitya karma, fruity action, karma karma, sinful reaction, vikarma, accumulated karma, that has not yet fructified across the karma. But it does not destroy the karma that is fructifying in this present body, prior of the karma. This has been verified in the Vedanta Darshan. So Vedanta says, Tat Adhigama Uttara Purva Gayor Ashlesha Vinasha Tad Vyabadesha. Brahma Sutra 4.1.13. This means that even a jnani has to face the results of his fructifying karma. According to Srila Rupa Goswami, however, a person who has taken shelter of the Holy Name, even if his chanting is just the semblance of the pure name, Nama Vas, not only destroys the results of his karma, results of all his karma, such as the reactions that are accumulating, but have not uh, yet borne fruit of Arabda, and the sinful tendencies of the heart that have uh, not yet uh, been acted upon, Kuta. But he also is destructive reactions, prior the karma. What then is to be said about the effects of chanting the pure name? Sri Rupa Goswami has written in Shinamattakam verse 4, Yad Brahma Sakshat Kutanishtayapi Vinasha Mahayati Vinana Bhogai O Nam Prabhu, your appearance on the tongue of your devotees burns up the results of their fructifying reactions. Prarada Karma. This is otherwise unavoidable. Even after Brahma has been realized by performing unbroken meditation. This is declared adamantly and repeatedly in the Vedas. So Prarada Karma can be easily taken care by Nama mm -hmm. So in Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu, the first characteristics of Kevala Bhakti is described as Kilisha. Uh, so, first characteristics of Kevala Bhakti, another devotion is Kilisha The mitigation of suffering. Kilisha is that this Bhakti completely destroys all sin, Papa, and the seed of sin, Papa Bija, ignorance, avidya, and, current, and currently fructifying reaction, Prarabdha Karma, and unfructified action of Prarabdha Karma. O Pranavtam Tham Papam Kutam Bijam Kalam Mukham Krame Neva Prili Yata Vishwa Bhakti Pratma Are different stages of dormant reactions to sinful activities to be observed in a sinful life? Sinful reactions may be just waiting to take effect, Kalam Mukham. Reactions may still further dormant, Kuta. Or the reactions may be in a seed-like state, Bija. In any case, all types of sinful reactions are vanished one after another if a person engages in the devotional service of Lord Vishnu. So that is the power of the bhakti. Huh? Uh, so in Bhakti Radha Muslim, Sri Goswami says that bhakti destroys both sinful reactions that are manifested within the present body. Parabdha and sinful reactions that are not yet manifested are parabdha at their very root. The Kiratas, for example, are impure because of their birth in a low caste. Seen in the form of a low caste birth is Prarabdha Karma and it is removed by just the scent of Bhakti. So, Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhan Sarasthi Prabhupada writes uh, that uh, this verse is not spoken for common Chandalas, dog eaters, who have taken birth in a foreign family according to their Prabhupada Karma and who remain engaged for the rest of their lives in abominable acts fit for their caste. Rather, it is spoken for Vaishnavas who after taking birth in a family of doctors become disinterested in the abominable activities of their family tradition and after taking Diksha from a Bonaparte Guru, remain engaged in the service of Sri Bhagavan. Yan nama de shravanani kirtana yas maranat api yas maranat api kvachit so, 
simply by hearing and chanting your name paying obeisances to you and remembering you even a dog eater immediately becomes qualified to perform so much yagya a celestial very sacrifice without waiting for another bird to be able to do so oh bhagwan what then can be said about the incomparable influence of having your audience hmm. so here um, it is certain that those who are gifted with a saintly nature have in their past life followed with a staunch faith all the behavior of a brahmanical tradition in their previous birth these people have completed austerities and sacrifices bathed in the holy places studied the vedas and so forth they have merely acted out of acted out uh, taking birth in a demonic family so as to bewilder the foolish and teach the idea among the male persons भगवान ने ऑल्सो सेड इन इतिहास समुच्चय नमे भक्त चतुर्वेदी मत भक्त शबच प्रिया तस्मै देयम ततो ग्राह्यम सच पूज्य यथा हि हम इट इज नॉट दैट अ ब्राह्मण हु हु नोज ऑल द फोर वेदास विल नेसेसरीली बी अ डिवोटी बट माय डिवोटी वन इज बोर्न इन अ चांडल फैमिली इज डियर टू मी एंड इज द प्रॉपर रेसिपिएंट ऑफ चैरिटी एंड द प्रॉपर पर्सन फ्रॉम हुम चैरिटी शुड बी एक्सेप्टेड even if born in a family my devotee like me is respected by all given by the brahmanas so you see prarabdha karma can be eradicated by bhakti alone shila bhakti mein thakur says that in this way the reason a person who has taken the shelter of the holy name of shri krishna takes birth in the house of a chandala is to perfect the quality of humility which is favorable for bhakti from this verse we can understand that more about uh, understand more about the deliverance of the hunter by the mercy of narad muni of jagai madai by the mercy of shri shivani and and of the prostrate by the mercy of thakur haridas hmm. so um, prarabdha karma uh, is difficult to get rid of but when nama bash will go away to see happiness and distress as equal is called samadash hmm. moreover devotees of shri narayan think that any misery coming to them is a result of their past actions that are no manifesting proud of the karma so it must be faced becoming equipoise to endure all misery with great tolerance to convey this bhagwan says that they are forgiving shami the root word shama is used in the sense of tolerance so devotees are tolerant and they tolerate the reactions to their past actions understand so um here the word adeshta means that they do not even envy those who envy them they think that such envy is the result of their currently fructifying reactions proud of the karma as aborted by parmeshwar and therefore they envy no one rather they maintain a friendly attitude towards all considering everyone as the dwelling place of parmeshwar uh, so um, the main aim of bhakti yoga is namo kirtan which is possible by vibrating the lips The holy name is not of this material world. Nama Prabhu dances on the tongue of the sadhaka and destroying his prarabdha karma and other impediments, bestowing ever upon prema and bestows everything up to prema. In previous yoga, a practitioner who was able to fix his mind in the practice of yoga was unable to attain the goal. Yet in kali yoga, perfection can be attained simply by uttering the holy name. In the first part, Sri Sai Baba said that kirtan is more powerful than smaran. By the process of kirtan, both the mind and the tongue attain such pleasure. Hmm. Bhagwan himself enters the devotee's heart through the medium of Hari Katha and destroys all kinds of your know, vicious and misfortune. In other words, the bad results of the devotee's karma karma are destroyed. His rudra, disease of the heart in the form of lust, is removed, and Bhagwan resides in his heart forever. If he hears Bhagwat Katha. So, prabhu karma can be you can get rid of prabhu karma by hearing Hari Katha. Um, but the ten of compounds, samiksha mano, bhunjale, evatma kordan, vipaka, bhagavad bhopo ve vidhan namaste, jive ta yo mukti padesh dai. One who accepts as your mercy the results of his own actions as well as the happiness and distress of his prabhu karma, endures them with an undisturbed mind and who maintains his life by offering himself. 
unto you by body, mind, mind and words is eligible to attain your lotus feet, which are the shelter of liberation. Mm. Mm. So we should know that this is mercy in Prayabha Karma and the suffering is also mercy. Just by hearing the all auspicious narrations about you, all kinds of sins such as Prayabha are removed. And all prosperity in the form of prema bhakti arises in the heart. Therefore, no one is equal to or more generous than who chants the chants and propagates narrations about you. Gopi hmm. also told this. Tavata thamrutam tapta jivanam. Those who clearly pursue your mercy at every moment with great enthusiasm and able to endure with unperturbed minds the happiness and distress that comes in comes to them in accordance with their bhagavad karma. To be the mercy of the Lord, with the hearts filled with love, voices choked with emotion, and the hairs of their bodies standing on end, they offer themselves at your lotus feet. Just as the Hare Krishna Mahajan, the Red Promiser, we can't hear you. Even the indwelling antaryami of those new. Sorry, Mahajan, your voice is cutting. Such fears of Pranapta is easily destroyed, however, when Bhakti manifests in living in his heart due to his having engaged in any aspect of Bhakti, such as Nama Kirtan. Sri Rupa Goswami states in his shape. Bhagavan in the form of the Holy Name. Can destroy the result. Fault of Alubha is a result of the logic Naya. Removal of the cause, removal of the effect. Accordingly, by acknowledging that the effect of a lower birth, which represents an effect of Arja, has been eliminated, um, it understood the problem that the cause must be must have been used already. Moreover, Purana explained that all mental and physical elements hurting Prabhupada are disturbed by Nama Sankirtan. I offer obeisance to Lord Ahantabe, remain and uttering his name immediately dispels all kinds of mental and physical elements. Thus, even though what is away from Prabhupada, Bhagavan mercifully gave 
due to world disease, suffering and lamenting. In order to increase their humility, eagerness, and energy, and so on. <laughs> wow. This is very encouraging uh, because sometimes uh, you suffer from some disease, then you realize actually that uh, it is also of Krishna. Otherwise, by now, it's a all disease go away. So, why do you really have some suffering or some disease? Please give them humility. Huh? So, Prahadana uh, or the Prahadana Dharma can be. Uh, the Hey Krishna, dear devotees, done the bad palm. Sorry about that. Ma just got cut off. I think he's having a problem with his network. We'll just wait for a while for him to come back. Hare Krishna Mahat Dandavat Prams, you on mute. Icha Vasha Papa Mupa Satanam Shietabu on Mukamapia Munshat. Prarabdha matram bhavati taresham karma avashishtam avashabhogyam. In accordance with the desire of those worshippers who are already attached to serving the name of Bhagavan, their full reaction imminent are destroyed. However, for non worshippers who occasionally engage in Nama Kirtan, only the sinful reactions from which of the Dharma remain. And it is necessary that they experience it. So here it is. Shri Gopakumar in Bhagavatam said that Gopakumar might doubt, despite of the powerful process, why the devotees seem to, to be subject to different forms of distress. In response, the Vaikuntha Parsada speaks this verse beginning with Icha. They say, although all the 55 sinful reactions for the karma follow of those who are devoted to serving the Name of Sri Bhagavan may be visible in the form of distress. Uh, nevertheless, the simple reaction according to their own desire and only the pious merit, Punya, that bestows auspiciousness remain intact. Why it is up to the person engaging in Nama Sankirtan whether he wants to elevate it to the karma or not. It is mentioned in Hari Bhakti Sudhode. Um, karma Chakram to Yaproktam. Agnangham surasurai madhbhakti prabalai mahe hiridangi tamevata. The cycle of karma which even the demigods and the demons are unable to transcend is easily surmounted by the devotees due to the influence of bhakti. Those who do not worship the name of the Lord must suffer the sinful reactions, power of the karma, that are presently manifesting even if they have somehow acted. Sometime engaged in Nama Sankirtan. However, although their manifest Prarada karma can only be exhausted by undergoing it, that karma which is not at manifest or Prarada as well as that which is latent, so on are destroyed. Um, 
So therefore, um, the great souls who enter service to the name of Hari are reluctant to reveal their vast and secret treasure of bhakti. Thus, in public, they behave as if they are suffering due to their own fault. Now, we got a nice verse here. And um, so, she Gopakumma question: Why are the imminent karmic reactions, Roga Udmuka karma, Bharat and other devotees not destroyed? Now, the Vaikuntha associates speak the verse beginning with Maha. They say the great souls who are attached to the service of Harinam have deep and mysterious moods. Externally, they appear to be suffering materially, but this is just to delude others. Actually, behavior is difficult to understand. To alert everyone to the perils of, uh, to alert everyone to the perils encountered in the development of one's bhakti, Bharat Maharaj made a display of suffering. Looked after a baby deer ended up obtaining uh, an unfortunate birth as the result of that lower association. What was the intention? Not willing to reveal the vast confidential treasure of bhakti, such great souls exhibit distress to the public eye in order to conceal the happiness of devotion hidden in their heart. Thus they keep hidden their most intimate devotion to Bhagavan. Hmm. Bhakta Hare Shu Hadadukha Dushana Kichitadha Bhikvat Krupada Krupatula Lokan Sadhachare Mimam Shasati. Although merely by performance of Sankirtan of the name of Sri Bhagavan, the strength and faults of all devotees are destroyed. Still, some devotees were merciful, just like the Supreme Lord, accept distress or exhibit flaws. Just to instruct ordinary people about proper conduct. She go back about my object. It is not there due to the manifest that great treasure of Nam Sankirtan for the deliverance of the whole world. The world associates reply in this verse beginning with Tan Mahama. The all faults and distresses of the devotees of Hari are indeed destroyed by the chanting of the name of the Lord, Nam Sankirtan. However, being merciful like Bhagavan, some devotees give instruction on virtuous conduct, Sadhacha, for instance, in the form of rejecting bad association. If one does not um, adopt proper behavior, one's heart will be tainted by sin, and the inclination for service will not arise naturally. Mm. <clears throat> for example, even the devotees such as Maharaj Bharat were thoroughly pure at heart, they demonstrated the fault of bad association. Kirish Maharaj being the embodiment of Dharma, Dharma Raj, exhibited the mistake of gambling and the, sin, and the sinless king Druga, and others displayed the scene of stealing from a Brahmana, all just in connection to the common people. In this verse, beginning with Dusanga, the Vaikuntha associates give examples how the devotees show the unfavorable results of taking bad association. There are devotees such as Bharat Maharaj was pure hearted just for the purpose of instruction. He personally raised a baby deer and to apparent attachment to birth in a lower species. In this way, he demonstrated the consequences of wrong association. The word Adi meaning others, indicates devotees such as Muni. All of them were pure hearted and free from defects, but they acted improperly just to instruct the entire world. Bhakti Prabhavena Vichar Jatiya Sanjaya Marena Sade Dushaiskam Vignati Vidran Kinajesh Jayestra Sarvatra Dehantavayam Saya. O Gopakumar, by the power of bhakti which is obtained by continuously reflecting on these clothes, you will always be victorious over the greatest of obstacles. Rest assured, we will help you all along the way. So here, Adhyo Gadhi Asasana Nama Kita Tadaiva Vilayam Yantiptam Namamitam Anantam Namamitam. Our four obeses to Lord Adhyo um, and uh, <clears throat> remembering him and uttering his name immediately dispels all kinds of mental and physical elements. So um, that is the power of the Holy Name. Uh, like may, many times we see. Uh, many many videos um, on YouTube. Uh, they say this is will go over means this this is will go over this means. Um, so actually, uh, because many times there are good videos also, 
because they tell herbal remedies and you know home remedies, homeopathy remedies, fine. But the easiest remedy is the chanting of the holy name. Huh? Um, so, um, but the greatest disease is actually disease of search, huh? the disease of submission. Um, this is the, the greatest disease. Uh, So here, um, thus even though devotees are free from power, the Bhagavan mercifully gives them virtues, spirit and lamentation, in order to increase their humility, eagerness, anxiety, and so on. In Shiva Bhagavatam 1.8.25, it says that Queen Kunti prayed to Sri Krishna only for her city. Thus can, uh, it is thus easily understood that hidden with his animal lies the treasure of prema. Huh? So, um, Kunti's prayers, they are actually very, very famous. Vipada Santana Sattvat, Chash Tattva Kutana Jayat Guru, Vipada Samyari, Vipada. She is asking for um, actually suffering so that humility will come. And she always uh, remember Krishna. Um, in the world, there are so many obstacles. Every step, there are so many obstacles. Um, uh, so the Supreme Lord has directly declared, when, a, when I favor someone, I quickly take away his wealth. Then his relatives considering him wretched, abandon him. At that time, devoid of shame, he takes full refuge at my lotus feet. Bhagavan has also said, the great element of poverty is a symptom of my special mercy. Hence, for the devotees of species, Bhagavan gives him sorrows. A humbling situation and so Thus, because the devotee does not have to undergo the results of his karma, the misery experiences can never be said to be the fruits of his Bhagavad As is the Vishnu Varshini Vritti, commentary on the third shower of nectar, named Sarva Graha Prashamadi, elimination of all impediments to bhakti. So, this is written here if you are or you are sick. They know that it is special mercy of the Lord. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you see that these days, uh, nowadays, it is opposed to the concepts of scriptures. The authentic scriptures do not uh, at all support ideas. God in the form of the poverty stricken. Janata Janardhan. The common people are God and Jeeva is Shiva. The living entity. If particular people are married, then what about wealthy and respectable people who have performed past activities in their previous births? What about righteous, learned and honorable people? Why is it that they cannot be Narayan? Those who accept the uh, notion of Dharit Narayan or cause taste are all atheists. Impelled by base on skaras or impressions from previous births. They have no relation whatsoever with pure Atma Dharma. Hmm? So God is never poor actually. Uh, he is not poverty stricken. He is the uh, of goddess of fortune. Uh, but devotee is the accept. Uh, uh, devotee accept poverty like Arjun Mishra. Like this is a story. Uh, that once there was a poor Brahman named Arjun Mishra, most exalted devotee of Sri Bhagavan. Every morning after performing his bhajan, he spent two hours writing a commentary on Srimad Bhagavad Gita. And then went out to beg for arms. Whatever he received by begging, he would give to his wife. Would prepare, cook, and offer the food to Sri Bhagavan with great love. She then gave the Mahaprasad to her husband, and whatever afterwards she would eat with great satisfaction. They, they were very poor, long clothes, old, and tall. They had only one dhoti suitable for going out outside. When the Brahman wore the dhoti to go for arms, his wife covered her body with some torn cloth. And when he returned, she would put on that same dhoti to go outside or to perform other household duties. They both considered their poverty to be a gift from Sri Bhagwan and were fully satisfied. They always offered whatever arms are collected by Bhagwan's mercy to their worship for deity, Ishta Dev, Sri Gopath, and later accepted his Mahaprasad. This was their constant mood. Thus, their time passed blissfully and they were not the least disturbed by their situation. The Brahman regularly wrote his commentary on Bhagavad Gita. One day after performing his morning bhajan, he sat down to write a commentary on Jesus. When he was Ananesh Chintayanto Maam Yajanaha Paripasate, 
एषा नित्यभुक्ता पॉवर्टी Therefore, this statement, Nitya, Bhagavad Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been spoken by Bhagavan himself. It must have been interpolated. Bhagavan Gita, Mahamya, could not have been No, the most compassionate Bhagwan, who protects the surrendered souls, saw that doubt had appeared in the mind of his devotee, regarding us. Taking the form of an extremely beautiful, tender, dark-complexioned boy, he filled two baskets with some rice, dal, vegetables, and ghee, uh, and, and putting them on either ends of a bamboo stick, he personally carried them on his shoulders to the house of this Brahman. The door was inside. He knocked and loudly called, "Oh mother, oh mother!" But the poor Brahmani was only wearing a torn cloth. So she, so how could she come out? Out of shyness, she sat quietly, but the loud knocking and calling out got denied. Finding no other alternative, she shyly came, keeping her head lowered, and opened the door. Carrying that weight, the boy entered the courtyard, uh, placed his board on the floor, and stood to the side. Out of shame, the Brahman lowered her head and re-entered the house. She, Bhagwan, in the guise of that boy, spoke to her as follows: "Mother Panditji, the Brahman has sent the supplies. Please take them inside." Until now, the Brahmani had been standing with her face lowered. On hearing the sweet words of the boy, she looked up and saw the saw in the courtyard two big baskets filled with foodstuffs. She had never seen so many vegetables and food blends. Being repeatedly questioned by the boy to take them. She carried them to the inner part of the house. In doing so, she suddenly gazed upon his beautiful face and became completely satisfied. Oh, how beautiful his face is! How can such a darkish complexion have such transcendental beauty? She had never even imagined such beauty. All stars fixed. Her eyes then noticed that on the boy's chest were three bleeding slash marks, as if someone had cut it with a sharp weapon. She cried, "O oh son, what merciless person has wounded your chest? Alas, alas! Even a stone-hearted person would melt at the thought of cutting such soft limbs." Sri Krishna, in the guise of the boy, said, "O oh mother, by bringing you these foodstuffs, I was delayed, so your husband himself made these cuts on my chest." Her eyes filled with tears. The Brahmani cried, "What? It is this? Just let him come home, and I will ask him how you have been so cruel." My son, do not feel distressed. Stay for some time. I will prepare this food, and you can also accept the prasad of Thakur Ji, the dear deity. Sitting the boy in the courtyard, the Brahmani went to the kitchen and started to prepare an offering. Krishna, the purpose of which I personally carried these foodstuffs, have been fulfilled. Now, when the boy returns to his house, he will immediately discover the authenticity of my words, and he will never doubt them again. In this way, having made arrangements to dispel the doubts of devotee, Krishna disappeared. That day, despite the Brahman was unable to collect any arms, losing all hope, he returned home, thinking that his inability to collect anything was the will of Thakur. He knocked on the door, and his wife opened. He saw that she was busy cooking. He inquired, "How is that you are cooking? When I received no arms today, what is there to cook? Why do you ask this?" Some time back, you sent so many food stuffs in the hands of that man that it will take both of us six months to finish them. So, why are you asking me? What will you cook? She was a little surprised, and your heart is like stone. This I did not know before. I see red gashes on his chest that looked on the point of bleeding. 
How could you slash the tender of the body of that boy? I will know about The Brahman completely amazed, asked her to explain. I did not send anyone home, nor did I beat a boy. I do not understand what you are talking about. After hearing the statements of her husband, she showed him the rice, dal, flour, and other things. But when she entered the courtyard to show him the boy and his cuts, the boy was not there. She began to search for him everywhere. Had he gone? Outside gate was closed as before. They both looked at each other in surprise. Misha, the Brahman now began to understand the whole situation. Tears flowed continuously from his eyes. After washing his hands and feet, he entered the deity room. And to completely dispel his doubt, he opened the Bhagavad Gita. He opened his Bhagavad Gita. That morning he had made three slash marks with red on the line Nitya Vyuktanam Yuyakshema Bahamiyam. But now these three marks are gone. Overwhelmed with happiness, he came out. Uh, he came out of the deity room crying, "My dear, you are so fortunate. Today you have a special bhakti and all these foodstuffs are uh, were brought personally to him. How could I possibly have brought so much stuff? This morning, while writing my commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, I doubted the statements of Bhagwan and slashed those words with three lines of the reading. That is why the tender chest of our Vashirkal Gopinath was bearing three rigashes. He is supremely compassionate. He is supremely compassionate. He has taken so much trouble to prove the authenticity of his statements and to remove the doubts of an atheist like me. His throat choked up and he was unable to speak. Overwhelmed with love, he cried out, Ha Gopinath, Ha Gopinath, and fell to the ground. Standing in front of Sri Gopinath, the eyes of his wife, who was struck dumb, mm, filled with tears. After some time, the Brahmana returned to the consciousness, and after taking his bath, he performed his daily duties. He offered the preparations to Sri Gopinath that his wife had prepared, and with great love, they both accepted his remnants. He continued writing his Bhagavad Gita, commented daily, and his life became full of prema. So the Bhaktivinoda Thakur quotes Krishna as saying, If you do not think that these three types of upasaka worshippers who have fruitful desires, Attain happiness and that my bhaktas suffer. My bhaktas think of me without deviation. For the maintenance of their bodies, they accept anything that is favorable for their bhakti to me and they reject all that is unfavorable. In this way, they are nitya vyukta, or ever united with me through devotion. Free from selfish desires, they offer everything to me, only. I alone provide all their wealth and any of their other requirements. Thus, I maintain them. From an external point of view, the materially motivated Pratika Upasaka are my devotees who only accept that which is favorable for service to me. We appear to be similar as both appear to be enjoying the object of this world. However, there is a big difference between the two. I see the yoga, I see to the yoga necessities and shame or maintenance of my devotees, even if they have no material desires. The special benefit my devotees receive is that by my mercy they enjoy all sense objects in a dispassionate manner and finally they attain eternal bliss. However, the Pratikupasakas again return to the field of karma after enjoying sense pleasures. They do not attain eternal bliss. I am indifferent to all mundane occurrences, but out of affection for my devotees, I feel delight in helping them in every respect. In my doing so, there is no offense at all on the part of my devotees, because they do not pray to me for anything except my favor. I personally supply their requirements. Hmm. So here now uh, we are discussing uh, the next shower, which is actually called Sadhana Bhakti Nishtha, and the fourth shower of nectar, the flow of ambrosia. And we have come to Nishtha Bhakti presented in accordance with the sequence written in Shimad Bhagavatam. So, Bhavanuva, thus far, two types of bhajana kriya, devotional service, have been described Anishtita, devoid of steadiness, and Nishtita, fixed. In the explanation of Anishtita bhajana kriya, it's six. Uh, different divisions were presented, such as Utsamai. Yet, following that, contrary to what might be expressed, the symptoms of Nishtita Bhajana Kriya, steadfast devotional practice, were not examined. Rather, we turned our attention to the topic of another devotion, the eradication of the impediments to Bhakti. This is because it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Krishna is the supreme well wishing friend of the saints, and hearing and chanting of his glory is the topmost virtue. 
he situates himself in the heart of those who constantly engage in hearing about him, thus destroying their amassed inauspiciousness. When all their inauspiciousness has been virtually destroyed, Nashta, through constantly serving the Bhagavan, by serving, constantly serving the Bhagavad, the Krita Bhagavad and Bhakta Bhagavad, the then unflinching devotion, Nashtiki Bhakti for Uttama Shloka, Sri Bhagwan, he, he who is eludized by the sublime verses of Shastra, awakens within their heart. In the first line of these verses, Shrinavatam Sukatha Krishna Purna Shravana Kirtana, unsteady devotion, Anishtita Bhakti has been mentioned and Nashtiki Bhakti has been described afterward. But between these two types of bhakti, there is a description of Anartidu. Their vast accumulation of inauspiciousness is destroyed. Abhadrani Vidhanoti. This statement denotes the topic of Anartidu. Furthermore, the use of the words Nashta Prayesho Abhadreshu as a mass of inauspiciousness is nearly destroyed indicates that there is still a portion of inauspiciousness that has not been eradicated. Therefore, the fact that Nishtika Bhakti is being described now after Anartidu is based entirely on the sequence presented in Srimad Bhagavatam. In text 5 of the second shower of nectar, the two stages of bhajana kriya, anishtita and nishtita, were described. The six types of anishtita bhajana kriya were then elaborated, delineated from text 6 to the end of that shower. However, the third shower of nectar did not begin with an elaborate elaboration on the second type of bhajana kriya, nishtita bhajana kriya, along with its symptoms as one might expect. Instead, the topic of anaradhyoti was delineated. Why has uh, Anartinurti been discussed after the unsteady practice of devotion, Anishtita Bhajana Kriya, instead of the steady practice of devotion, Nishtita Bhajana Kriya? Shri Vishnachita Thakur quotes two verses from Srimad Bhagavatam that support the sequence of his presentation. In these verses, Nishtha is described only after an elucidation of Anartinurti. Shrinvatam Sakata Krishna Punyashavana Kirtana Ruddhanta Stohi Abhadrani Vidunoti Srut Satam Nashta praye shabadreshu nittam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhakti bhagavati nashtiki. Sri Krishna is the eternal um, well wishing friend of the saints. Both hearing and uttering his glories are purifying. Sri Krishna situates himself in the heart of those who hear his katha and destroy all the auspicious, inauspicious tendencies. By constantly serving Shrimad Bhagavatam, Bhakta Bhagavat, or by constantly rendering service to Bhagavan's pure devotees, Bhakta Bhagavat, the inauspiciousness in the heart is almost fully destroyed. It is then that unflinching devotion, Nishtika Bhajana Bhakti to Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, who is eloyized by transcendental shlokas, awakens in the heart. In the beginning of the first of the aforementioned verses, It is to be understood that these words refer to in the beginning of the first of the aforementioned verses, it is stated, Srinvatam Sakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Attend to be hearing and chanting the glories of Bhagavan, Sri Krishna purifying. It is to be understood that these words refer to the stage of Anishtita Bhajana Kriya. This is because they are followed by the description, Ridhi Antastohi Abhadrani. After entering, uh, their hearts, he purifies them of all uh, inauspiciousness. This statement in the first of the in the first of these two verses describes the stage of anathnidhuti. We must find that the phase in which anathas are eradicated is only mentioned after anishtita bhajana kriya. So bhakti actually um, two type anishtita and nishtita. So steady bhakti and unsteady bhakti. Huh? So, um, great eagerness to attain the service of Bhagavan is necessary for sadhana. Uh, Srila Gurudev is telling. Uh, these devotees are real sadhakas, but what are we? We are just on the first step of bhakti, which is Shurma, Shavanam and Kirtana. And that is also of two kinds, Nishtita Bhakti and Anishtita Bhakti. Our sadhana is included within Anishtita Bhakti because our intelligence has not yet become immovable. Uh, someone may be thinking, I will do bhajan here at home with my parents because they are getting old anyway. 
or having heard that the household is uh, likened to a lake of hell, I will leave it and join an ashram. But then again, Arjun, Shiva, Thakur, and uh, the gopis were great devotees. And they were householders, grastas. Therefore, I shall remain a grasta. But now Narad, Shukdev, the Goswamis, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all remained, uh, all referred to family life as a dark well and left it. Uh, they were unable to do bhajan there. Mm. Uh, what will I do? All right, I will remain for some time and then leave it. Uh, no, on second thought, um, I will go immediately. In this way, we, we go on uh, undoing what we have already done and being unde undecided, we have no nishtha. Firm resolution. We are practicing bhakti, but it is anishtha. So we should endeavor to make our intelligence immovable and come to the stage of nishtha. Then after attaining nishtha, there are four kinds of obstacles, anarthas to cross over. By sincerely chanting the holy name and hearing Harikatha, then without uh, being called automatically prestige, Pratishtha will come. Uh, Mukti Soyam Mukulitanjali Seva Tasman Dharmartha Kamagataya Samaya Pratiksha. Krishna Karana Bhakti Vanu Seva. Mukti liberation with folded hands will be standing behind us, saying, My Lord, can I serve you in any way? The eight yogic perfections will also come and stand behind us um, with folded hands, ready to offer their services. Having attained Nishtha, then we may be able to observe our minds in Krishna somewhat, but still some anarthas will remain. The reactions to our previous karma will come of either sinful or pious actions. Or we may be practicing karma mishra bhakti, covered bhakti, bhakti with selfish desires. Then the fruit of that will come also. What big important people of this world try so hard to attain, uh, but don't get these things will automatically come will be present before us abundant prestige will come to us and we can easily become drowned in the enjoyment of that therefore be especially aware of this there are four kinds of anarthas those arising from previous sins dushkrutatha those arising from previous piety sukrutatha those arising from imperfect service bhakti uttha and those arising from offenses in chanting aparadutta or if we even unknowingly commit an offense to the feet of a Vaishnava, then its reaction must come. We must leave these four kinds of anartha behind and move forward in sadhana. Our nishtha will transform into ruchi, and after ruchi, then asakti will come. In the stage of asakti, we will have complete attachment in our bhajan. Guru Goshthe Goshthale Isu Sujane Bhusaragane Samantre Sri Namni Varjanavaya Dhanda Sharane Goswami says, Oh mind, taking your feet, I request one thing of you. I have deep attachment for the mantra that the spiritual master has given. I have deep attachment to those places where Krishna has performed past times, such as Radha Kunda, Sham Kunda, Govardhan, Nandagram, Barshana Sanket, and the best place of all. The place of Radhika's residence, Yavat. Ultimately, for rendering service to Radhika, one must live in Yavat. You should be attached to all these places with deep sentiment. We should have Nishtha and Asakti for both the worship itself, Bhajan, and for the object of worship, Bhajaniya. Bhajan is hearing and chanting and so forth. And Bhajaniya is Shishi Radha Krishna. Whenever Ruchi becomes fully mature for both of these, it will be Asakti. And then by the mercy of Bhagavan, one's heart will never deviate from him. This is all included within Mad Bhakto, become my devotee. So you see that this is the thing. Uh, no, we should have Nishtha. Uh, Anishtha Bhakti and Nishtha Bhakti. Mm. So Chaitan Chaitan also said, Shraddha Shabde Vishwasa Kohe Sutra Nishay Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Karma Krita Hain. Sri Chaitan Chaitan Amrita Madhila 22.62. If I just perform bhajan of Krishna, then everything is accomplished. Such a high quality type, such high quality type of faith is called Shraddha. If that Shraddha is placed in the words of scriptures, in the words of the spiritual master and in the words of the Vaishnavas, then everything will come from that. By following whatever they say, everything will be all right. Even if everything in my life is destroyed, then let it be. I will continue executing Bhagavad Bhajan. This is Shraddha. 
Even though there may be anarthas in our bhajan, there is anishtita bhakti, unsteady devotion, and nishtita bhakti, firm devotion. In anishtita bhakti, there are false confidence, utsamai, uh, sporadic endeavor, ghanadharana, indecision, vidavikalpa, and delighting in the material facilities that come from bhakti, taranga rangini. Uh, battling with the desires for sense pleasure, vishaya sangara, and the inability to hold vows, niyamakshama. Even though all of these may remain, if one's faith is of good quality, then upon attaining Sadhu Sangha, his internal nature will gradually change. When one understands that upon attaining Sadhu Sangha at the night, meaning his conditioned state of existence will be finished soon, his faith is of good quality. The end of the night heralds the first of Krishna's pastimes in the daytime. The peacock is sitting in the upper part of the Kadamba tree and the quail is seated in the upper part of the mango tree. The parrot is seated on a branch of the pomegranate tree and because his beak is red, his, he blends in with the red birds of the tree. The female parrot eats grapes, so she is sitting on the grapevine. All are ready and waiting for Vrinda Devi to give her order, thinking, when will Vrinda say? Um, seeing that the appropriate time has come, Vrinda Devi gives the order to the birds, begin singing. So they start making the sound, color of what is the meaning of color Rava? Rava means sound and color means fruit. So this sound tells Krishna that it is time to awaken and play the flute. The quail, the hummingbird and the male and female parrots start singing and become so intoxicated by making these musical sounds that it seems Kamadev is blowing the conch shell. The male parrot is awakening Krishna and the female parrot is awakening Srimati. The peacock is saying K, which means who. He is referring to Krishna. Meaning, who can conquer the great mountain of Radhika's jealous anger, shyness and patience, which no one else can cross over. By making this sound, he is saying, Oh Krishna, please awaken. The female peacock is making the car sound, which also means who, meaning who is that, even though her heart is in the form of a uh, sidling, can overpower the mad um, elephant Krishna, who is uh, directly Parabrahma himself, Radhika. Then everyone awakens and the lila begins. Hmm. So actually, um, this is what is actually the Nishita Bhakti. Huh? So in the beginning of the first verse of the aforementioned verse, it is stated, Shrivatam Sakata Krishna Punnish Shavana Kirtaka. Attentively hearing and chanting the glories of Bhagavan Shri Krishna purify. It is to be understood that these words refer to the stage of Anishthita Bhajana Kriya. This is because they are followed by the description Rudyanta Stoi Abhadrani. After entering their hearts, he purifies them of all inauspiciousness. This statement in the first of these two verses describes the stage of anarthari vritti. We thus find that the phase in which anarthas are eradicated is only mentioned after anishtita bhajana kriya. In the first part of the second verse, it is stated, Nashta prayesha abhadreshu nityam bhagavad sevaya. As a result of continuously serving the Grantha Bhagavad, Shrimad Bhagavatam or the Bhakta Bhagavat, the pure devotee of Bhagavan, Anarthas are all are almost completely destroyed. This, stat this uh, statement indicates that even in the stage of Anarthavritti, portions of some very powerful Anarthas have not yet been exterminated. It is for this very reason that in the Shabar 3, text 4, Srila Vishnajiya Thakur has so logically presented the five stages of freedom from these Anarthas, namely partially free, Eka desha vartini, predominantly free, bahu desha vartini, almost completely free, prai ki, completely free, purana, and absolutely free, atyanti ki. Hmm. So, this is actually uh, how we become gradually free from the um, uh, completely become free from anarthas, actually. Huh? So, the four anarthas mentioned in the beginning of this chapter in the following ways. Eka Darshini partially, number two, Pahu Desha Bhattini substantially, number three, Prai ki almost completely, Purana completely and Aptadik absolutely thoroughly. Hmm. The many anarthas stemming from Aparats are partially destroyed in the final stage of Bhajana Kriya, rendering the devotional service under the guidance of spiritual master. This is known as Eka Darshini Varshini. When Bhajana Kriya, Bhajana Kriya gains maturity, it turns to Nishta or steadiness in devotional activities. In this stage of development, the mitigation of anarthas is substantial. Bahudesha Vartini. Thereafter, on the platform of Rati attraction, the unwanted desires in the heart are almost completely absorbed. 
प्राई की विद द फर्स्ट अवेकनिंग ऑफ प्रेम और डिवाइन लव book. so uh, we'll stop here today and then uh, page number 308 this will be the next time we'll be discussing uh, from page number 308 so tomorrow will be shri jayva dharma class and uh, uh, very interesting books these are very very great treasures um, we'll continue to discuss jayva dharma tomorrow uh, if you have any comments or questions please um, uh, please write to me uh, thank you so much i welcome all of you for this class and uh, remain strong in bhakti uh, i know that um, it's not very easy to perform in kali yuga we have so many anarthas and um, so many obstacles come uh, situation is uh, not very favorable uh, so many obstacles come so many type of uh, uh, problems may come in our life uh, but don't worry krishna is there with you gurudev is there with you and don't uh, waste this uh, human form of life huh? this human form of life is very very rare with great um, lot of blood sweat and tears um, guru and vaishnavas predecessor acharyas have brought us to the lotus feet of krishna huh? so we should never uh, de- be deviated uh, from this path huh? for whatever reason huh? like haridas thakur he was beaten in 22 market places like lord jesus christ he was crucified huh? mohammed he was also attacked so much but they never gave up the path of god consciousness so we should be like haridas thakur like prallad he was also given so much harassment so i know that uh, many many doubts may also come in our heart sometimes uh, offenses also may come but we should always uh, stay stay uh, you know uh, steer clear of the offenses we should not um, commit any offenses and always respect every vaishnava and uh, do pranam to everyone to every jeeva and engage in bhakti uh, and if any disease is coming or any misery is coming or lack of money poverty all these things we should think this is the mercy of krishna uh, they come in everyone's life you know we are all in the same boat not that i am that i am not getting any misery i am not getting any sickness or uh, any problems are not coming in my life they are only coming in your life that is not the case everyone's life problems come problems are uh, from birth only so many problems are coming but obviously the devotees don't uh, pay so much attention to the problems uh, because they are fully absorbed in meditating on sweet pastimes of sri krishna so shri gurudev told that you should step on the head of these problems uh, and we should uh, always chant the holy name we should know that the holy name is the only way for getting out of this material world uh, there is so many miseries uh, in this material world but uh, holy name is very very powerful so i welcome all of you for this class i am seeing that you know all of you uh, rashmita didi and kartana and this ganga didi um, vishaka didi ekadashi didi and all of you are here i am so happy that all of you are um, Uh, attending the class uh, and actually as you see that i am reading from shri gurudev's books these are the compilation of shri gurudev's lectures he gave his classes the notes the devotees made uh, and that is what i am reading and i am seeing that gurudev spoke um, so much uh, elaborately on these topics uh, and uh, you know he knows so much um, like yesterday i was uh, thinking of one uh, prostitute called pingala and um, i read uh, search in gurudev's folio and uh, pingala she developed detachment and then someone asked gurudev question that how that prostitute developed detachment and attraction for krishna then shri gurudev said that she got the association of lord dattatreya who was an avadut who was very exalted devotee himself an incarnation of bhagwan so without the association of devotees we cannot develop bhakti hmm? so pingala although she was a prostitute she developed pure devotion for krishna by association with avadut dattatreya 
so we should also um, we should also take association uh, by it is all now on electronic media uh, but take association of Srila Gurudev read his books read um, Chipa Dandi Maharaj uh, lectures hear them lectures hear them again and again uh, and um, hearing will strengthen your bhakti uh, and hear the lectures of Srila Gurudev Chipa Dandi Maharaj all the Vaishnavas Read the books of Srila Gurudev, Srila Bharati Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Vila Tirtha Maharaj, Bhakti Nod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. And we should try to, um, uh, try to understand their mood, try to understand their mood. This material world is a miserable place, but there is a great, great benefit of material birth because this gives us a chance to do Bhakti. Other uh, species, uh, you cannot do bhakti. In demigod species, there is so much sense gratification. The demigods are only enjoying, 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 you know, where is the time to do bhakti? And yeah. animal species also, they are only focused on enjoyment or just suffering. They don't know bhakti. So only human birth is very rare. So please uh, make the best use of this bad bargain. I thank you, all of you. Uh, so this is not any, any new process this is a very old process this was um, propagated uh, in it was the desire of Srila bhakti siddhanta saraswati Prabhupada. Uh, he had actually bhakti siddhanta saraswati Prabhupada had a disciple by the name sadaran das he was the first german disciple he had so so when he was sending Srila goswami maharaj for preaching uh, to the western countries bhakti aprakut bhakti sarang goswami maharaj was, I think Appearance Day we celebrated yesterday. So he asked uh, Sadananda Prabhu, the German devotee, that what title we should give to uh, this Goswami Maharaj. And then he said, give him the title that uh, the head of missionaries. So Goswami Maharaj went to the England and tried to preach on his best. Uh, then Srila Bhaktidhan Swami Maharaj went. So now this uh, Sampradaya is spreading all over the world by the mercy of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Guru, by the Lion Guru. Bhakti Pragyan, Keshav Goswami Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Dhan Swami Maharaj, and all the predecessor Acharyas. So I, I didn't know about this exalted Gaudiya Sampradaya. I had heard about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but not knowing that he has a Sampradaya or he has Sikh Goswami and his followers. I didn't know all of these things. When I left the shore of India and I took the Lufthansa airline, I went to America, O'Hare Airport, and uh, didn't know anything that I am where I am going, what is the aim and object of Malafa, I didn't know. But when I read the books of ISKCON, especially Srila Bhaktidhan Sahib Maharaj, when I started associating with the ISKCON devotees in how it came around Street, Brooklyn, and I took the version of the deities which are worshipped by Prabhupada himself, Bhaktidhan Sahib Maharaj, slowly, slowly something began to sink in that, yes, the aim and object of life is not to make money, but to understand Bhagavad Gita. And there was a German devotee, very tall devotee by the name Yagya Purish Prabhu. He used to give classes on Bhagavad Gita. I used to attend Yagya Purish Prabhu's classes, sometimes Ram Bhattar Prabhu's classes, Rupad Maharaj's classes, and then another, another Brazilian devotee, Sharad Bihari Prabhu, their classes. Again and again, they used to hammer that oh, money is not everything, bhakti is everything. Then I got shelter of Srila Gurudev uh, coming to Gaudi Amat, and then it became even more clear that um, human life is not to be wasted in mundane pursuit. And as Dattatre has told uh, in the 11th canto that human life is very rare. Uh, so uh, we, now all over the world, people are practicing this devotional service of Krishna. Mm. Uh, you see recently what happened in Syria and you know, all these countries and Turkey and Arka came and all these things. So Bhagavatam describes this, these events, uh, why earthquakes come. Uh, they may give some explanation that, you know, there was a lava under the, underneath the earth and uh, this and that. But actually, Srila Bhaktivedan Sai Maharaj, um, he has explained these earthquakes take place um, because they are actually uh, Anantashish. He actually uh, not very happy that people are not practicing any devotional service. Uh, so that is the reason these earthquakes are taking place. Um, uh, so actually, you say that when Balram and Krishna were thus petitioned by the intimate friends, they were inclined to please them and with smiling face, they, pros they proceeded towards the forest, surrounded by all their friends. Immediately upon entering the Talwan, Balram began to yank the trees with his arms, exhibiting the strength of an elephant. 
because of this jerking all the ripe fruits fell on the ground upon hearing the um, so here sai maharaj explaining uh, upon hearing the sound of the falling fruits the demon dhenukasur who was living there in the form of an ass approached with great force shaking the whole field so that so that all the trees moved as if there was an there were an earthquake the demons appeared before balram uh, and kicked his chest with his hind legs at that uh, at first balram did not say anything but with great anger the demon kicked him again more vehemently this time balram immediately caught hold of the legs of the ass with one hand and wheeling him around threw him into the tree tops while he was being wheeled around by balram the demon lost his life so this is the first demon actually killed by shri balram and this is um, the ash demon and that is the, uh, represents our lust eh? is our lust eh? so you'll see that actually balram nitananda balram without his mercy shri gurudev is manifestation of balram without the mercy of nitananda prabhu guru balram acharya balram nitananda balram shri gurudev how can we get mercy of krishna eh? so we should always pray to nitananda prabhu eh? that akrodha parmananda nitananda ray abhimana shunya nitai nagare bida so this um, uh, even if there are so many miseries are there uh, but um, they will not uh, harm you if you chant the name of krishna uh, krishna will always uh, protect you uh, guard you because krishna is told you know we read today that krishna is very much um, uh, protective of his devotees uh, he always wants to protect the devotees who engage in hearing and chanting the past tense of sri krishna so you have on you have protection of guru vaishnavas radha krishna i have no doubt so you are all blessed thank you so much for attending the class vanchha kalpatur vishak krupa sandevaj paridanam pavane vishnu vishnu namo tando tando thank you so much hari krishna hari krishna hari bol so i'll give the jayadani जय श्री श्री गुरु गौरांग गांधर विकाय गिरिधारी श्री राधा विनोद बिहार जी की जय जन तलाष्ट जत गुरु शिष्यन भक्तिदान्त नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज गुरुदेव की जय लीला वृष्णम विष्णुपा शिष्यन भक्तिदान वामन गोस्वामी महाराज लीला वृष्णम विष्णुपा शिष्यन भक्तिदान स्वामी महाराज की जय आचार्य के श्री श्री श्रीमद भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोस्वामी महाराज की जय जय सपरी कर जय गुरु शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी प्रोपा ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कौ श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपी गोवर्धन द्वार सुमनात्मक शिव शिव मंडल की जय गंगा जमुना तुलसी भक्त देवी की जय श्री जगन्नाथ ब्रदे सुभद्रा सज्जन चक्र जीव की जय सर्व विघ्न विनाशन भक्ति विघ्न विनाशन नृसिंह भगवान की जय भक्त प्रोत श्री प्रहलाद महाराज की जय चारो संप्रदाय की जय चारो आचार्य की जय चारो धामों की जय आकर मठरा चैतन्य मठ की जय केश गौड़ी मठ की जय रूप स्नान गौड़ी मठ की जय किरदारी गौड़ी मठ की जय गंगनाथ गौरी मठ की जय श्री राधा रमन मंदिर की जय अन्य शाखा मठ समूह की जय हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय त्रेंडी स्वामी शिषण भक्तिदान दंडी महाराज जी की जय नाम निष्ठ संत श्रीरुद्धास प्रभु की जय बठेर से गोविंद की जय धाम वासी भक्त वृंद की जय समागत भक्त वृंद की जय निताय गौर सीतानाथ प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल क्षमा करो दया कर कृपा कर रक्षा कर गुरुवे गौर चंद्राय राधिकाय जय कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तत् भक्ताय नमो हरे कृष्ण दंड हरे